That way they get socialization, they get to get out of the house, they get to look at another face. And, but they're still homeschooling their children, and, and I like that. So, that's it. Thank you. Did you yeah. the, to me, the word provide kind of clarifies um, financially who's responsible for the home education. If the parents are going to provide it, then the school district is not. That's a financial point. point. <laughs> <laughs> or anything. That word provide, that's what it indicates to me, too. That's an excellent point. You know, what's interesting about that, Alan, is that the word provide isn't defined in 193A no. or the rules. Mm -hmm. So, really, uh, there's a lot of room for interpretation there. I never thought, I don't know why the negative is years ago, but it's, well, the word's not defined. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of little notes where Mike Capitello, who was a lawyer who was on the PM for many, many years, said, Keep the, a little bit the opposite we're doing with the rules now. Keep the words purposely vague. Yeah. Because if you yes. ever have to go into court, then yeah. it's sort of what I think Glenn was saying. Yeah. 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 I like that. You know, I, I'm not saying I would have defined uh, provide. I'm just saying I'm surprised it didn't occur to me years ago to say simply, well, it isn't defined, so nobody can say it means this or that. Mm -hmm. It's provide, you look it up in a dictionary, and it has a lot of different meanings. <laughs> Should we continue to say, I think this 51% thing that we say to people is maybe outdated, and we shouldn't say it anymore, and what we should be saying is, as long as you're providing the education, but do we have to worry about people setting up their own private school without state oversight, or should we not even worry about that? The rest of you worry about that. I, I don't think so, because okay. I think that would be pushing the law. Right. It's this, this a, a group, cooperative group. Well, we get requests quarter. from people, may I take uh, my friend's three children and do all the homeschooling for them? You know, so right. is that legal or not? You know, well, that's you just have to get permission of the, right. in a case like that, the resident. The participating so. agency. I think, I, I agree, I think the 51% is maybe outdated and that as a case-by-case -case basis, you know, can you homeschool your neighbor's children? Sure, but you should definitely check with your participating agency and make sure that they're all right with that and that they're still covered by the law. Um, the other place I've heard the 51% referred to is how much a child might be enrolled in public school. If you're enrolled 50% or more, we're right. not homeschooling. Right. So we need you here all day. <laughs> <laughs> Quit coming into that. <laughs> I can't remember. There was, there was discussion around that a while back as to how many, how many uh, classes the district would allow a student to take before they're considered full time. And I don't. I think most school districts have their own policies and it okay. pretty much right in there will limit what they what their conditions allow. It's usually two per term. Okay. But but I think the it, they have the flexibility to define it themselves as I understand it. That's good to know. Yeah. And generally three would be over fifty percent. Yeah. And once you have a high school student, they're kind of defined who's giving the diploma. Right. So that's right. Yeah, they can hold on to that. Yeah, right. So they're not going to give you a diploma if your student didn't take that number of courses in their school. And they right. really took them. Right. Okay. Can you make a note of that? Okay. Thank you for that discussion. I appreciate that. All of her perspectives really help me report back to the homeschool community accurately. Um, on a really happy note, the divorce case that I had brought up back in January, um, where the one parent was contesting that homeschooling should not continue to happen, the children ended up going to 
take a standardized test at the school as mandated by the court, passed it with flying colors, and so homeschooling has been taken off the table as a thing that can be debated in court. So that was great, great. really great. My mom is very relieved and very grateful for the advice on the different tests. Um, she let her kids take a few practice tests so that their anxiety wouldn't be as high, and so thank you everyone for your advice on that one. That was a good outcome. Um, I think it was back in maybe November when Steph, you had brought up during comment um, the oh, yeah. push -out. push outs. And I have done a little bit of digging, um, and while I'm not sure where to go from here, there is a program called the Dropout Prevention and Dropout Recovery Program. Um, it's under ED 900, and it was put in place by, sorry, let me get the RSA. RSA 189, colon 59. Um, 50 or 50? 50, 59. Oh, 59. Sorry, RSA 189 dot dot 59. <laughs> um, and I wonder if this could be used to address dropouts. I know that was part of the issue that we had coming down from Berlin last year with um, attempting to put more restrictions on homeschoolers because there were several high schoolers who had decided not to go back to school. And so um, the superintendent was really concerned and wanted to find a way to keep track of those students to make sure they were still getting an education. And I wonder if this would be some place to direct concerned citizens' parties um, in the, an event where a high schooler is not going, not attending class as a public high schooler, and is either getting pushed out or is just being considered homeschooled for whatever reason. <coughs> this is actually a funded thing as well but you do have to apply um, for funding for any sort of program. But, um, and there is a council as well, so I don't know if anyone knows of the council or when they meet, but I would love to talk to them. Um, I haven't been able to find it yet on the department's website, but I will keep looking. I haven't heard of the other council. It's, um, let's see, do I have, I have this. I have a fall other who used to be a was involved in about prevention at one time, so I can look around it. Okay. Um, here, I did print this out. This is the request. Pass this out. Um, pull it up here so I don't need to. Is it 189? Um, it is RSA 189.59. 59, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60, and I've covered this whole ED 900, 901, 902. Um, well, I looked through this a lot, and it, okay. it looked to me like more of the emphasis was on the program participants, meaning these agencies that can set themselves up to receive the funding and participate in the program, much like the drug rehabilitation centers, and I think our legislators would probably know a lot more about how this all works, because yeah. I was quizzing my head on that. But in other words, there's a lot in there about how they can get the funding and set themselves up, but if the schools aren't using them, so I'm curious to know if the people from the education establishment know about this. I called, I talked to our reps last night and collected more of the recent um, drug push out info and you know there's no indication that that schools are saying or you could do this program or you could do this program you're just saying well you can homeschool your child and the parent is saying but i can i work full time and i don't know how to do this and they say sorry so that that's what i'm worried about and i'm not sure if there's a connection between this and the people at the school who have the issue with the problem child now if there is great but if they don't know about this program right then maybe they need to. Maybe we can help them. I, I don't know. But I mean, there sure are plenty of one email that's sitting on here right now where she says, and if your committee wants to hear about more, just ask me. I can get them the more. So this to me, it's happening. Concentrated in a region or a town or an area. I'm just curious because dropout rates have dropped so significantly around the state. I mean, ours is so low, it's barely registers. 
that's good. Yeah. I was just really going about the really rural areas. Yeah. Right. That's right. Do you have that? Okay. So more. But I don't know if mm -hmm. that's true across the board, really. The examples I have are rural. The last report that I had found was from 2010, so clearly that's not accurate anymore. But. Um, I do agree that there seems to be, maybe people don't know that this exists because this would be a phenomenal way to help those kids. Um, I don't know if we go about asking for... Well, school districts, am I right, school districts are required to provide alternative education if a student wants to drop out and is not happy at school. That's what I understand from my district, which is why Governor Wentworth provides an alternative education program. Yeah, there are a variety of options for, for families if a child is not <coughs> well needed to educate them. Right. Um, you know, special education becomes a big one because there's usually issues that have to that home. You know, when the child gets court involved and the court takes over and places the child, or the school district has to evaluate to determine if there's a disability that needs to be addressed. And, right. Um, and those programs, I believe, go up to the age of 21. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. the one we were talking about. Graduation. Okay. Last night, the rep specifically said the student did not have an IEP. Okay. So they just didn't want him in school anymore. Okay. Not quote involved? No. no. I'm not that I'm not sympathetic to the yeah. school situation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, obviously, the, you know, depending on how you're here, the child was having problems at school, or the school was having problems with the child. Yeah. Which came first, you really Right, of course. And what kind of problems were they? Yeah. It was the child expelled, or like formally expelled? No, not as far as I know. No, just they, they, they sort they, of make it so that the only option available they can't do that. is homeschooling. They can't do that. I know. <laughs> and then the kids don't get homeschooled. They get in trouble later. Something comes up. Somebody looks into their records, find they weren't really homeschooling, and then all the blah breaks loose, and all of us homeschoolers suffer for it. Right. So that's why homeschoolers get really angry about it. Yeah. 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 We do. So, I've never heard of that phenomenon, but so I'm from the southeast region, so that's a whole different thing. That's yeah. not rural. I think it <laughs> Center and North. Yeah, this yeah. last one was Conway. Yes. So, okay. Had a, a child that had special education needs, and Merrimack Valley just wanted to keep pushing him, pushing him off. So, so how we you fought it? it? Okay. Who fought it? My husband and I oh, okay. and insisted yes. that no, he was going to, summer school was one of the issues he needed to, he was already behind, he wasn't doing well, and right. no, you're not going to just bump him up. We had agreed that he would stay, would do summer school, if he caught up, then he would go into ninth grade. Okay. And then all of a sudden they would, no, we're just going to go ahead and say, no, you're not. <laughs> right. Because he will continue to be behind. Right. Or he will get frustrated and when he can, he'll quit. Yeah. And that's wonderful when there are parents who are there to fight for that child and fight that fight and say, no, 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 this is what needs to but happen. But I can also but see yeah. where parents would get very frustrated yes. and if they don't know what, know how to push and which, what to fight for, or if the child is actively fighting against them, mm -hmm. which can be even more challenging. So mm -hmm. maybe once you get more detail about this over, uh, this council, yeah. you could put that as a. Um, connection on, on the uh, HEAP website, if someone is having issues, then um, here's some, an alternative for you to see, you know, to go to if there's some issues. Has anyone heard of this council or heard of when they meet? I or never heard of it before, but I'm curious now. I'm look Me too. <laughs> we'll um, find it. It's out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember um, 10 years ago there was a ton of work around drop up prevention at the public school level, the high school level. And yes. I said, I know that yeah. when Paula was the right. deputy right. commissioner, he was very active. And, okay. and I know that the North Country, uh, the superintendent from Berlin, yes. I can't think of her name, but she's Karina an amazing Scott. woman. Yeah. Karina, yeah. She, she was talking about all that they, similar to, to a case like this where, you know, they were trying to get this kid help. And he was 16, so he legally could stay home. But right. law says that they have to have an alternative plan until they're 18. 18 right. So um, they had all these different alternatives that they were trying to work with. And then other kids 
learned about it, and they started to want to do the same thing. And so um, I know that the North Country is involved in it. And Manchester has that job course center now, mm -hmm. and that is just taking off. But and they have kids from all around that have come there, and they're, it's very successful. That's great. I hope it just continues to grow. Because we need that for they, these kids, even when they turn 18, they get out of high school and they don't know what to do with themselves. Right. You know, we used to go to work in the mills part-time, or we'd do something. Yeah. You know, anybody that, that wanted a part-time job, there were millions of them out there. It's not that kind of a world anymore, and they need to have something that they can a skill, a trip. do. Yeah. yeah. And that's the name of it, Manchester Job Corps? The Job Corps Center. It's on Hackett Hill Road. It's residential. Kids have to live there. Oh. It's a big commitment. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Big commitment, but it's great. My my thought is I'm going. Some of the um, there are some emails on the handout that I passed out, um, and I was going to reach out to either there's um places to send these proposals, and I figured I would reach out to the people whose emails are on here to, to send the proposals to, to find out if they can give me a little bit of information about the council or when they might meet, um, seeing as how I'm kind of new here. Do, do I need to get approval to do that, or is that something I can just do as the HEAC chair? I can just say, I don't know. Okay, cool. <laughs> So I'll just let you guys know I'm going to reach out to these folks and see if I can't get some more information and report back. <laughs> um, Ellie, do you have, want to tell everybody about the magic humor? <laughs> no, the only, the only update is what I had said in the email is that the form and the enrollments have all been updated as of yesterday. Thank you. Yeah, so there were actually two 